to City Line with me. I have a very familiar face because she is always in our community doing good of some sort. I'm talking about Amy Allison. She is the Director of Community Mobilization for Associated Ministries, and she's here to talk about Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. Hello there, Miss Amy. How are you? Good. How are you? So, Amy, what is the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program? So, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, also known as VIDA, is a free program. It is a nationwide program, more than 50 years old across the U.S., and more than a dozen years here in Pierce County, where we provide free tax preparation services to low to moderate income taxpayers. And that's generally defined as those uh, below 57,000, um, although we can be a little bit flexible, somewhat above that. And we also work pretty closely with AAR tax aid, uh, AARP tax aid, which provides a similar free service, but with a focus on people ages 60 plus. Oh, I love that. So it must take a village. So who is involved with, I'm gonna call it VIDA? Well, as the name suggests, it is a volunteer staff program. Uh, we have more than 90 volunteers. Um, a lot of them are college students who are looking for um, internship or um, work experience. And then a lot of others are people from the community, including retirees. Um, some of them are just regular community members in different professions who are just interested in giving back. And um, so the volunteers are the people who staff the program. And then we have other community partners that help us actually make the program work. So that includes uh, funders such as the um, IRS and um, United Way of Pierce County, and then community partners that actually let us use their space to offer the service. So this year, some of those spaces have included um, some near VFW and Tacoma um, Housing Authority at Salishan. Oh, I love that. So this year, everything looks different. Mm -hmm. um, and so does the volunteer income tax assistance look different this year because of COVID? It does. I mean, we had to curtail a lot of the services um, just in order to keep people safe and because uh, we needed to do a lot of things to involve social distancing. So we had far fewer in-person locations than we have in the past. Um, this year we had, um, there were six in-person locations, three run by VIDA and three by AARP Tax 8. In prior years, it's been more like 26. So that's a big difference. And at those locations, we are, um, we're doing things like everyone's required to wear masks. We do no touch temperature checks, make sure everyone sanitizes their hands. The um, volunteers and the taxpayers are socially distanced from one another. Um, and we have plexiglass screens between them. And one of the biggest changes is that we're doing all the appointments by appointment only. It used to, we used to take walk-ins and that really helps prevent like the large waiting room folks waiting to get served. But also um, the taxpayers don't stay the whole time when we do their taxes. They come, they do an intake, they get their documents scanned and then they leave. And um, sometimes same day or sometimes a week later, they'll be asked to come back for a follow-up appointment to pick up the finished return. So that's a big change. The other big change is that we also moved a lot of our services online. So people with access to the internet um, can go online and um, have their, their taxes completed completely remotely. And that service is primarily run by um, our other partner, the Wealth of the Olympics and Rainier region. Wow, so that's incredible. So how will people reach the online service? So um, they sign up at www.getyourrefund.org backslash Pierce Wah. And uh, the Pierce Wah is important because that's how you um, the get your refund platform is also nationwide. So the Pierce Wah is important in order to make sure that you're connecting to the volunteers here in Pierce County. Um, there's also a free do-it-yourself option at that site. So folks who feel like I, I just want a chance to do it for free, but I can do it myself, there's an option to do that as well. Or if you want to uh, prepare to do it for you, again, you'll be communicating online with that person and um, you'll be taking photos and then um, emailing those photos to a secure link so that they have your uh, all your documents. So you can do it completely remotely. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, Amy, Associated Ministries uh, does so many wonderful things for our community. And one of the things they do is they lower barriers for people. Mm -hmm. 
So for someone who doesn't have access to an internet, what should they do to take advantage of this program? Well, as I mentioned, we did um, we do have we did have six in person sites, and four of those. Um, so you may have already heard that the IRS has extended tax season to May seventeenth. So four of the in person sites will be extending their services, but um, those are again by appointment only. So they do need to call to make an appointment. I do want to apologize in advance. Like everything else, our volunteer phone lines are volunteer staffed, and so it can be difficult to get through. Um, we just want to encourage you to keep trying, and we're going to try to serve as many people as we can. No, I love that. Well, the fact that you even just said that covers a multitude of frustration already. So, um, so you, we we get an in person appointment, and then you've mentioned like the the shields that are in front of them. You've mentioned dropping off, um, and then going away and coming back. And now that we are in phase, we're going back to phase two, unfortunately, how will you keep everyone safe during the in-person portion of this? Well, I think, I mean, we've been pretty rigorous all along. And so I think we're gonna continue doing the things that we're doing. So again, um, you know, sanitizing hands, no touch temperature checks, uh, you know, very short appointments. So that's the whole purpose of having them come in and um, just do an intake and then leave. Um, so we've been really rigorous about that and have kept everyone safe so far. We're gonna continue doing that. I love that. So any other changes that people should know about? Well, there's some huge changes actually. Well, um, I think one of the biggest things is that with the new passage of the American Recovery Act, a lot of those changes um, impact people's taxes in positive ways. Um, so first of all, people may have already known that um, the stimulus, both the stimulus um, that were passed in 2020 and the new one that was part of the American Recovery Act, all U.S. citizen adults and legal residents are eligible for that stimulus as long as they're not a dependent on someone else's tax return. So we have a lot of people that we've already been able to serve this year, people who don't normally file taxes because their income is too low, for whom we have done tax returns simply so that they can claim that stimulus. Um, and so that's been a huge boon for a lot of folks, um, been able to help a lot of folks actually obtain some really much needed funds through that um, program. Then the most recent stimulus um, was expanded to include adult dependents. So in prior, the prior stimulus only included dependents under age um, 17. And now it's going to include all adult dependents. And the really good thing is that we know that the IRS is playing catch up with all of this. So people who um, may have just filed, um, didn't file in the past, the IRS is playing catch up and they're recognizing, oh, this person is eligible. They're also issuing those third stimulus checks to those folks. So um, I know that, that they're still getting it all out. So I know some folks haven't gotten it yet, but they are really trying hard to play catch up. Other really great changes as a result of that, if you received unemployment in 2020, um, you can deduct up to 10,200 of that unemployment is gonna be non-taxable um, on your tax return. And if you file the tax return with unemployment on it prior to this law going into effect, you do not need to amend your taxes. The IRS is gonna do that for you and they will addition, issue additional refund if you're eligible for that. So really, a lot of really great things that can happen for people. Um, there's some benefits for folks who may have taken out early um, funds from their retirement early. So they're too young to retire and they've taken out funds because they had to due to COVID. Um, income losses. There's some benefits to that as well. They don't, um, they're not going to be hit with the penalty that you usually get hit with for early withdrawals from a retirement fund. And they can split the distribution over three years. So they can only have to claim one third of it this year if they choose to help keep their income from going up and their tax rate, obviously. So a lot of really good things are coming out of that. Um, one of the most exciting things is the expansion of the child tax credit. So um, it was $2,000. Um, it is going up to $3,000 for children ages 6 to 17 and um, $3,600 for children under 6. I'm very excited about that because they've expanded to children who are 17. My child turns 17 next year. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to still have that credit. Um, the other thing, they're still trying to work out the details. Um, so they're not sure about how this is going to work yet. But they're trying to see if there's a way that people can actually receive that credit in monthly installments rather than wait until they file their taxes to do it. 
So they haven't worked out the details to that. So there's more to come. So again, lots of great, great changes that really benefit people financially um, through this new law. Wow, Amy, Im impressive laundry list. You are incredibly informed. Amy, um, last two questions. What should people bring with them? Um, should they choose to have an in-person um, appointment or even online, what do they need to send? Yeah, it's the same things. They should have it in front of them if they're doing it online and bring it with them if they're um, coming in person. So number one, uh, we need a photo ID for the taxpayer and their spouse if they are married. Um, we need social security cards for everyone on the tax return and we need the actual cards you can't just come in with the number that's really important in a time of identity theft um so i know that's a tough thing sometimes people know the number and don't have the cards um i do encourage people that the tacoma uh social security office is fairly easy to get through if you need a replacement but um we do need that we can also take letters from social security or social security statements because those are official documents from social security or from the IRS in place of the card. But we can't just take somebody giving us their number. Um, and then whatever tax documents you have. So that includes things like your W-2s from, uh, from work, 1099 forms for other forms of income. Um, this year, one of the new changes is that even if you don't itemize deductions, you can claim up to $300 in charitable giving. So bring your receipts, charitable giving receipts, if you'd like to claim that deduction. Um, there's other things. If you are itemizing things like your home mortgage interest, um, your car registration, people don't realize that that's something that can be deductible. Um, so a lot of really um, pretty much your tax documents, I think, that, that you get in the mail, they're usually labeled as such. But really important that ID and that social security um, card because we really want to protect against identity theft. Absolutely. Amy, in the years that you have been involved with uh, VITA, what is what are the fears you think that keep people away from filing their taxes? I think I think there's a fear of um, making mistakes, number one. And I think one of the benefits of VITA is that our uh, tax preparers are all IRS certified. So, and we have a 98% accuracy rate. So we do a really good job of making sure that we do um, an accurate and high quality job on your tax returns. And if there are errors um, and we, we catch them, we have a second person always double check everything um, to make sure that we don't make any errors. I think that's one. The other thing is that what will happen if I owe? And um, I found the IRS is really willing to work with people um, to help people with payment arrangements, to help people uh, figure out options. They're not necessarily understanding if you kind of ignore the problem, but if you are up front with them and say, hey, I need help or I can't pay this right now, they're really willing to work with you. So um, I think um, not being afraid of that. The other thing, of, um, great thing about VITA is we can do prior year returns up to three years back. And if you are um, do a refund from up to three years back, you can still receive that refund. So I would encourage people to um, come see us, come talk to us, and we'll do what we can to help you. Amy, and when is the last day of the program? So, well, the last day of tax season this year is May 17th. Okay. Some of our locations will be open till the end of April, and if some till May 17th. The getyourrefund.org backslash Pierce Wah site will be doing some limited postseason taxes too. So if you had to file an extension, if you weren't able to get it done in time, or if you need to do some of those prior year returns or amendments, they will be available on a limited basis after tax season as well. Amy, thank you so much for all of your knowledge, um, your wisdom, and your easy, graceful way. Um, you make taxes not so scary. And I know the people who are on your team are the same way. So a huge thank you uh, from us here who benefit from such a great program. Thank you so much, Amy. You're welcome. We have much more to come on CityLine. Don't go away. We'll be right back.